Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're really looking forward to worship with you guys. Um, my goodness. I can't wait till we're all here together again. Uh, so we're going to get right into praising the Lord. Uh, Tay, if you could just lead us all in prayer real quick. That'd be awesome. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to, to meet before you today, Lord. And we ask, Father God, that you just fill our homes with your presence, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit just dwell with us, Father. We praise you and we thank you, Lord. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like me.
with the melody you surround me with a song I'll deliver it from my I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Yes, I am a child. my mother's womb, you have chosen me, love has called my name, I've been born again, to your family, oh yes I am, the blood flows through my veins, I'm no
future, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. You have bought and paid for us, Lord. You're so good. We really thank you, Lord. Lord. You made the way. Yes. Have your way here today, Lord God. I need you to continue to pray. Um, and we're praying together. Now, the National Day of Prayer is coming up. And you'll see May the 7th is the National Day of Prayer. On May the 7th, as we're praying, uh, we typically gather in downtown Conneaut. We've done the last few years a big gathering with a lot of people. We're not doing that this year, but we want to encourage you to still take this day to pray. So what I've talked to other pastors in our community, and we just really, and actually when we were talking about this, I was talking to another pastor here and just felt the anointing of the Lord over this, that what we're going to do is we're going to encourage you to pray, pray and do a prayer walk in your neighborhood around where you live. So it may be around, you know, the blocks that, that are around, right around you, walk a few blocks, and uh, some people may want to go downtown Conneaut. Make sure you just, we're not going to congregate together, but just uh, go, come with your family. Walk up and down the street and pray over our city. Or if you don't live in Conneaut, maybe you live in Ashtabula, or maybe you live in Albion or Springfield or you know Kelloggsville or Monroe, wherever you live, take the opportunity to get out and walk and pray. And we're going to specifically f uh, focus on Ephesians 3. And we're going to read that because there's some depth in that that's really awesome. And, and I want you to pray that. Now, you can also, if it, it's going to be me, I'm going to also jump over to Ephesians 6. And I'm going to pray the, the armor of God and, and praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit according to Ephesians 6, 18. And, and we're going to just declare the word of God and read the word of God, not just in one place, but all over this region. So in Ashtabula County, Erie, and Crawford County, wherever you're at, I want you to be uh, take an opportunity, and that's coming up on Thursday, uh, May the 7th. Thank you so much for, for your faithfulness to the Lord and giving, and uh, thank you for being faithful. And uh, Many people are doing online giving or you're sending uh, your, uh, your tithe in, mailing it in, which is great. I've had some questions this week about doing online giving. Just want to mention to you, to do that, go to our website. So when you go to the website, it's different than the Facebook page. You go to conneautchurchofgod.com, it'll look something like this, and then you'll see this red, where this red circle is, you'll see this online giving tab. The online giving tab is going to uh, be what you click. When you click it, you, this blue box will come up. It says online giving. Click anywhere in that box, and then this page will come up, and this page will say, um, you put in what fund, like if you want to give to tithe or missions and so forth, the amount. Click Make Donation. This is our secure uh, giving site. Uh, it is secure. Go through the portal and you can put your information in there and you can give that way. And so thank you so much for your just continued support of all that, uh, that, that we're doing here of the church. I want to tell you as your pastor how much I appreciate you, how much I appreciate that you are, are supporting and, and that you are uh, giving during this time especially. Uh, so people have asked me, Pastor, um, you know, how, how long is this going to be? And uh, praise God that we are looking as a nation at uh, starting the process of reopening. I want you to pray over that. Pray that there's no surge in cases. We're praying against um, this thing spreading. And so would you just really pray with me about that? And we have some plans. We've been working on a lot of different contingency plans um, and not just about trying to uh, necessarily do what we've done before, but okay, what's the process look like? So uh, we're looking at stages just like the government's looking at stages of what we're able to do. And let me just tell you, as your pastor, I have your safety at my heart. And I want you to be safe, and I want our community to be safe. So we're praying over that, and I cannot wait until we are back together worshiping together. There's no one that wants that more than I do. Um, I know you're saying amen there in your home, uh, and they're saying amen here because we want to be back together, but we want to make sure that we do that in the right way. And um, we've been praying, and the Holy Spirit has kind of uh, been speaking and directing and we've been walking through that so I'm hoping that over the next uh, short amount of time we'll be sharing with you some plans and what we'll be doing 
um, as the Lord's leading us. Today, I want to share this word with you, and it's really kind of the first uh, in, a, in a series I want to preach on this subject, simply undercover, undercover. And during this time, we've been reading Psalm 91. We sent it out to you. We've been praying Psalm 91 over and over and over. There are some special promises of the Lord in Psalm 91, and I want us to focus on them. And we're just going to look at one verse from that today. And the first verse of Psalm 91 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Literally under the shadow or under the covering of the Almighty. I want you to notice that, and it says he, but it's he or she, it's anyone, any person who dwells in the secret place. But it's not just the secret place, it's the secret place of the Most High. So that means the secret place belongs to him. The secret place is God's. Literally, God has a secret place. That word secret is literally, it means hiding place or shelter. It means a covering or a hidden place. That God's saying, I have a hidden place that's hidden from, from others. That others can't get in there. That the enemy can't get in. That the world can't get in. And when you get into this place, there's a shelter from the chaos that may be surrounding you. It may seem like, man, the whole world's going crazy. But when you come into the secret place, man, things change. There may be chaos in the world around you, but, but God has a sheltered place. He he has a hiding place for his people. And I know that, you know, as you're walking through this, that's sometimes day by day and hour by hour and minute by minute that you might just feel like, man, things are in chaos. But in the middle of the chaos, can I tell you, God has a secret place. And the great thing about that secret place is you have access to the secret place. You have access to the secret place. So today, regardless of, of, of where you are, if you're a child of God, God says you can come into the secret place. God's giving you access. Now, getting access is an important thing. When um, Brooke was young, one thing that we loved to do was we loved to take her to Disney World because Disney World for kids is such a cool place. And so we'd go to Disney and, and uh, we would be able to see that through her eyes and uh, would be able to walk through and see all the different things and it's just such a, a special place but when Walt Disney originally built Disneyland the first uh, park that he built there was a place he wanted to have a unique area just for VIPs and so in an area of Disneyland called New Orleans Square in that section there's a door. Now it looks kind of like everything else in Disneyland. You're walking down the street. Most people don't even notice this door. But this door is special. It might just kind of be like any other door that you would you know, see as you're walking in that area. But this door, there's a 33 over here on the side. And this 33 on the side is special because this gives access to a special place. When you go through this door, you have access to what's, what a lot of people never knew even existed, and that is a special club, and that is called Club 33. To get into Club 33, to get through this door, to turn that knob and get into this and access here, you, you, you can't just walk in there you know, for anybody that's walking in. Now, millions of people go to Disneyland, and millions of people have walked past this door and had no idea what's on the other side of that door. But for certain people, they got access. Now it's more well-known in the original days. It was, it was really a secret. It was a, it was a secret place. To get in, it simply costs you a $40,000 initiation fee. And then every year, you have to pay $12,000 of annual dues. And if you would simply just pay $40,000 up front and then $12,000 a year, you can walk through that door. And when you walk through that door, you get access to a really cool place. It's a secret place, 
in Disneyland that's private, that's cut off. I mean, everybody else is going around. They think they're experiencing all that Disneyland has to offer, but they've never been behind this door. Because there's stuff in here that's just for certain people to be able to get access to. And the stuff that's in there, oh my goodness, it's a lot different than what everybody else is experiencing. And in the chaos of Disneyland, and it gets chaotic, and in the, the heat and the bustle and hustle of everybody going everywhere, and you've got just people all over the place. You walk in here, and all of a sudden, man, it's gorgeous and it's beautiful. And they have special experiences that are available only for the people that are a member of Club 33. Nobody else can get there. Now, I don't know about you. I've never been through that door. I cannot afford to get through that door. I'm never going to go through that door. I don't have access to get through that door. Now, I, I, I'm telling you, that would be a really neat place to visit. But I have access to a place that's a whole lot better than what's behind that door. Because the God of the universe says when the world is going crazy and everybody's going every which way and they're all saying, oh my goodness, this and that and the other and people are operating in fear, the world's spinning out of control and I don't know what's happening and you don't know where to turn and you feel like you're in over your head and the enemy's trying to attack in your mind and you're walking through all this. God says, I'm giving you exclusive access to a secret place that nobody else knows about i'm letting you come in the door and here's the here's the deal every spirit filled born again believer you don't even have to be uh, filled with the holy ghost if you just are saved you get access everybody that knows jesus gets access to go through the door but the problem is too many christians they just walk past the door too many Christians are just wandering around out here in the world and they're wondering what's going on and they're operating just like the rest of the world is operating and they're dealing with their problems based on the flesh and based on the natural and based on their human ideas, but they've got access to the door. They could get into the secret place, but they walk right past the door and they don't even acknowledge how important it is. You have access to the secret place. If you know Jesus, he's given you access. And here's the truth. There is life in the secret place. When you get into the secret place, everybody else that's out there thinks they're living. They're not really alive. They don't really have the abundant life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That comes when you come into the secret place with him. He says, he who dwells in the secret place. Well, that word dwells means to live or to inhabit or to abide. It means you come to life when you get in the secret place. Your life comes. Let me tell you, he breathes like he did to Adam. He breathes the breath of life into you when you come into the secret place with him. It's a life-giving place. That's where he's called us to. Right there in your home this morning, can I tell you, there is life-giving breath of God that is available to you. That he's saying, you just come to me. If you're worried, if you're weak, if you're fearful, if you're upset, if you're, if you're angry, if you're tormented, if you're frustrated, if you're insecure, if you're struggling, you're confused, and you don't know where to turn. He says, I'm giving you access to the secret place. You can't get this anywhere else, but only in him. Only under the covering of the Lord Almighty. When you are under cover, there's a flow of life. He just breathes life into you continually. He sustains your life. Some of the people might say, well, where is this secret place? And how do I get access to the secret place? How can I get in the door? Let me tell you, I'm glad you asked. It's the place of intimacy. The place where you come with intimacy with God. When you come and He's there and you get in that relationship with Him and you draw near to Him. It's a place that can be anywhere. And that's the awesome part. You know, if you're a member of, of Club 33, you got to go to Disneyland to be able to get in there. And even if you were a member of Club 33 right now, you can't get access right now because it's shut down. But the access that you have never shuts down. 
It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what time it is. It doesn't matter what's going on outside. He says, come on in the secret place. Let me bring peace to your soul. Let me minister to you on a level that the world can't even understand. You can draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. Let me just tell you today, you don't have to come to the church building. You don't have to get in a specific place. I think about that and I think about my mom. Because, man, my mom, she knew how to get in the secret place. And in the hardest times of her life, I remember I would sit outside of her bedroom door. She'd go in her bedroom and she would lock the door. And, of course, I, I didn't want her to go in there because I didn't want to be alone. I wanted to come out and be with me. I wanted somebody to come out, you know, hey, why, why, why don't we do something? But I would sit outside her door and I would listen at her pray. And she would kneel at the foot of her bed and she'd start to talk to the Lord and it wouldn't be long and she'd start to weep and cry before the Lord. And then I'd listen and she'd, she'd be in there and all of a sudden the glory of God would fall. His presence would come down. She'd be speaking in tongues in there. She'd be weeping before the Lord and the presence of the Lord would just come right in that room. Can I tell you, you can touch God right where you're at. Amen. You know, we miss the opportunity for all of us to be together, but God's presence right now is right there in your room. That's what I pray, right there in your living room, right there wherever you're watching this today. The presence of God right there where you're at. It's a place of prayer and a place of worship. It's a place when, you know, you just get God's word and you just open it up and say, God, speak to me today. And you always combine the word and prayer, prayer and the word. Take the word and pray over it and say, God, show me in your word, reveal to me in your word. And that's where all of a sudden you're, you, you leave this world and you come into the secret place. Jessica will tell you, there are some times when I get stressed over things and we're walking through and, and, and I don't have time to go and, and get aside right now. Maybe I'm in the middle of, of doing a lot of things and, right, and she'll just hear me and I'll just be saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And I'm just calling his presence. Lord, I just need you right now, right in this situation, right in what's happening. Sometimes just under my breath, I'll be saying, Lord Jesus, right now. And all of a sudden, boy, I'm in the secret place. I mean, I can be anywhere. Go, walking through whatever it is and I just sense his presence and his peace come over me and let me just tell you that's too many Christians are living outside the secret place he's saying you can be undercover but too many Christians are living uncovered lives you're saved, but you haven't been in the secret place with him. You, you know Jesus, but you haven't come apart to just be with him. And he's calling you during this time right now. While the rest of the world is panicking, we don't have to panic because we know that I can call on his name any time of the day or night. And I've got intimacy with God that I come into that secret place with him. You know, you come into the secret place, and guess what? He's got hidden things for you. He has secret things for you. There's revelation that only comes in the secret place. You can't get it anywhere else. There's, you can't have the knowledge and the, the wisdom and experience anywhere else. But he's going to speak to you hidden things in the secret place. Look at what Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says. I love this. If you want to know God's phone number, it's J-E-R-333, Jeremiah 33.3. Call to me. You call, and I'll answer. You never get a busy signal. You never get a text, I'm busy, I'll call you back at another time. You never get that from God. Other people might be busy right when you call. God's not saying, I'm too busy. If you call, I'll answer. I'll answer you, and I'll show you great and mighty things which you do not know. You can't get this anywhere else but when you come to the secret place and you call on Him. Now the word mighty there is the word batsar. It means hidden things or fenced in things. Things that are, they have a barrier so other people can't get to them. 
Other people are walking right past this place and they don't know what's on the other side of the fence. They can't see it. They don't have access to it. But he said, if you call to me, I'll give you access to fenced in things, to hidden things. Look at it in the Passion Translation. He said, ask me and I'll tell you remarkable secrets that you do not know Oh, and I love this, about things to come. You can talk to a lot of people and they can tell you what happened in the past. You can talk, right now there's a whole lot of people on the internet that, that think they know more than anybody else of what's happening right now. They think they've got inside information and here's what it is and all that. When you talk to God, God doesn't just tell you about the past. He doesn't just tell you about what's happening right now. God's going to tell you about what's coming tomorrow. Nobody else knows that. They might think they do, but they don't. God says, you come into the secret place. Not only will I tell you what happened or what is happening, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you the next step. I'm going to tell you where I'm leading you. Hmm. And when I get in that secret place with the Lord, I tell you what I'm hearing about what's coming is revival of the Holy Ghost. What I'm hearing from the Lord about what's coming is awakening. God began to speak to us last year about the connection between the United States and Scotland and about revival that's coming there and revival that's coming here. And we've been praying for that. We've been saying, Lord, do it again. I got my, my wristband on here. It's a do it again, Lord. Do it again, Lord. Send revival. This year, we've been praying, God, send an awakening. God, send an awakening. And let me encourage you that when the Holy Spirit spoke that word to us, he was not unaware of what would be happening right now. God was not unaware that this whole chaos would, would ensue, not just here, not just in Ohio, not just in the United States, but around the whole world. This morning, uh, a pastor, a great pastor from, from Ireland, who pastors a large church, he's an overseer over there, and uh, just uh, was reading a message from him this morning. And he was talking about the pastors over there. And they've been on this, I think, even longer than we have. And uh, they've been walking through it. And, and, uh, and, and he's asking for prayer. They've lost pastors uh, to this. And, and their churches, there are some churches that are greatly struggling. And, and, and they're wanting to pray, Lord, for, for the stop of this and for wisdom and direction as they're moving forward. And, and, and so it's all around the world. But even in the middle of all that, here's what I'm hearing. There's an awakening coming. There's, and God's using this time. God's using this right now. Let me encourage you, listen to me. Don't waste this time. Don't waste this time. This is a season, it'll be over. Don't waste it by just playing games on your computer or being on Facebook or, you know, doing whatever. Let me tell you, use this time. It's a gift from the Lord of preparation, of Him saying, come aside right now. Let me show you what's about to come. I'm preparing my church for what's coming. Well, what's coming? I'm telling you, we're getting ready right now. And I'm just, I'm going to brag on our, our tech team. We've got uh, some members of our tech team that they've been working, feverishly working. They've been working in this room. And the Lord, we had, we had plans for this year that we wanted to try and do. And when all of a sudden this happened, I began to pray. And a lot of churches are, are hitting the brakes and deciding don't spend any money, don't do anything. And the Lord told me the opposite. He said, I prepared you for this. This is the time. I'm giving you this time right now. So you start preparing. So you know what we're doing? These guys have been working like crazy. We have been working. We've pulled in a different people doing different things. We're preparing this place for the harvest that's coming. Because here's what, I, here's what I'm sensing. God's saying this. God's saying something is stirring. And there's going to be an in-gathering. There's going to be revival. There's going to be awakening. There's going to be a harvest. I'm believing it's going to be all generations. But specifically, there are going to be teenagers. There's going to be young adults. There's going to be young families with kids that are going to come to know the Lord. Prodigals are going to come home. And I don't know if you sense it while I'm speaking it, but I'm telling you, that's not for me. 
me, that's a word from the Lord right there that God's saying that we need to right now, and I'm so proud of our leaders because they're doing this. They're, they're praying and they're seeking God about how we're going to reach the next generation. I believe we have a short time. I believe Jesus is coming. I believe there's a final revival, and we're on the cusp of it right now. And this is preparation time. This is time to get in the secret place and hear what God is saying about what is to come so that very, very soon there's going to be the sound of a trumpet and the dead in Christ are going to rise first and we who are alive and remain to the coming of the Lord are going to be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So comfort one another with these words. Let me tell you the revival that's coming is going to usher in the return of Jesus Christ to this earth. Right now, we've got opportunity to be in the secret place. This is a season of the secret place. You know what happens in the secret place? You get hidden away. You get separated from everything else. That pretty well describes what's going on for the whole world right now, doesn't it? Right now, God's removed so many of the things that honestly, as Christians, we use as excuses. Well, I don't have time. Well, God's given you some time. Well, you know what? I'd love to do that, but the kids have got their sports. They don't now. <laughs> well, it'd be great, but you know what? You know, the pastor better not preach too long because the kickoff's at 1 o'clock. No, it's not anymore. You know what? All these other activities, and I'm so busy, and I'm running, and I got this, and I got that, and I got that. And God says, okay, let me just shut all that down. And you come in the secret place. Do you have an excuse now? Get in the secret place with me right now. This time is a gift. God's saying, use it. Get in the secret place with me. You know, as a church, we celebrate open doors and, and, and inviting people in. But can I tell you, in John chapter 20, after Jesus had died and rose again, all the disciples are together. And the Bible specifically says, the doors were shut. It's kind of like what's going on right now. All the doors are shut. But when the doors were shut, Jesus came walking right into the house, right in the middle of them. And then he breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. And that's what I'm praying right there in your home. The doors are shut and we're not able to be together like we used to be able to be together. But can I tell you, he wants to walk right in that secret place and he wants to breathe on you and say, receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost in your your life. Amen. You are under cover. You are under his cover. The U.S. military has secret forces. They have special forces that train and they have different places that they train. And some of them, they're places that aren't even known to anyone else other than the people that are there. And some of those special forces, they do training for things. They don't even know all the situations that they're training for. They just know, here's what I've got to do and this is what I'm being told and I'm going to be training. They're, they're put away in a secret place. The family of those people can't know where they're at. They can't know about what's going on. Because it's vital that the enemies of the United States don't know about their training. It's important that the enemies of the United States don't get wind of, of what's happening in that secret training area. And that's exactly what God does with his church. He says to you, I'm calling you to a secret place so I can raise you up so that the enemy doesn't even know. Because when you come into the secret place, you're speaking to God and God's speaking to you. And the enemy is, is, has to stay outside and he's saying, wait a minute, no, 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 no. And you get strength from the Lord. You get a word from God that you're not going to get any other way. 
He's putting you in the secret place. Even if you don't want to be, right now, he's saying, I'm putting you in the secret place. Here's what Psalm 31 says about that. It says, you shall hide them in the secret place of your presence. That's really describing what's going on right now. God said, I'm hiding you away in the secret place of my presence from the plots of men. You shall keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Look at it in the Passion Translation. So hide all your beloved ones in the sheltered secret place before your face. Wow, that's where we're at. Overshadow them by your glory presence. God, do it right there in homes this morning. Let your glory just come down right there in homes right now. Keep them from these accusations, from the brutal insults of evil men. Tuck them safely away in the tabernacle where you dwell. Can I tell you, when we can't necessarily come to this room and worship, God's saying, I'll go there to you. He's the great physician and he makes house calls. He's coming right there where you're at. And he's saying, don't get involved in all of the worldly stuff and accusations and insults and trying to get into all that. He's saying, I'm tucking you safely away. Just come into my presence. Get in my word. Get on your knees. Get shut in with God. And let me tell you, God's going to do such a work in you. He's going to speak to you and you're going to have peace and not be in torment anymore. In conclusion, God is calling you into the secret place. God's calling you. Unlike Disneyland, you don't have to pay to get in. For you to get access, you don't have to pay a great price. Sometimes we mistakenly think that, well... If I was a better person, if I did good things, or maybe if I had spent more time, or maybe if I did this, or if I knew the Bible better, those are not requirements. He's saying, you just come to me. You call to me. I'll answer you. I'm going to take you to the secret place and give you revelation. The price for access was already paid. Think about that. Jesus paid the price for you to get access. You don't have to worry about trying to get into Club 33 by paying 40 grand. You, you, you've had the greatest price that's ever been paid, paid for you, and Jesus paid it on Calvary. Maybe you're watching this this morning. Maybe you're watching it because your spouse or somebody in your family had this on and you just happen to kind of be listening, but God's dealing with you right now. Maybe you haven't been walking with the Lord. Maybe you haven't been living like you know you ought to be living. Maybe you used to know the Lord and you've been straying and he's calling you home. He's calling you back to that secret place. He's beckoning you today. We're going to pray. And as we do, if you want to surrender your life to the Lord, can I tell you, Jesus died so that you would have access to come into the secret place. God loves you so much. He loves you so much that he gave the greatest that he had for you. Christians, pray right now because there are people watching this that are hanging in the balance. God's dealing with you. I'm going to pray a, a simple prayer and right there where you're at, I'm going to ask you to pray out loud. Everyone in the room, I'm going to ask you to pray out loud there. You say, well, we're all saved. That's okay. I want you to pray out loud. And for those that maybe you're just far from the Lord today, and you just want to get right with Him and come back to Him, and you want to get to that secret place, the place of peace, the place that He breathes life into you. You pray this prayer to the Lord. I'm going to ask those that are here to pray this after me. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, I come to you and I thank you that by the blood of Jesus I have access to come near to you. To repent of my sin. To turn away from it. 
and to turn to you. Thank you that you love me enough to give your life to pay the price for my sin. I confess you as my Lord and as my Savior. Thank you for removing my sin as far as the east is from the west and for calling me by your name. I'm saved by your blood. I am a Christian because I follow Christ. I love you. Thank you for strengthening me today by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, if you prayed that prayer, I want to ask you today a couple things. Number one, you need to testify. The Bible says you overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. So you need to speak it out. Whoever's there with you today, you need to tell them, hey, I just, I just prayed that prayer to the Lord. I just gave my life to the Lord. You need to make sure that you're testifying of that. That's how you overcome. And w- if you would, let us know. Send a message. Make sure that we get connected with you. You need to get in the Word. And if you don't have a Bible, we'll send you a Bible. You just send us a message, we'll get you a Bible. Just send us a message here to the church, or you can call the church, and we'll ship one to you right away. And I would encourage you, if you haven't been reading the Word, get in the Word. Go to the Gospel of John, and just begin to read. Just take maybe a page a day, and combine the Word and prayer. Prayer and the Word. Now, I would always tell you, you've got to get in a good church. If you don't have a home church... I'm looking forward to having you right here in this room with us when we get back together. If you're anywhere around here, you may, it may take a little drive, but here's what I know. A church alive is worth the drive. Amen. And very soon we're going to be back together and we look forward to having you here with us. Now this morning we're going to receive the Lord's Supper together. I'm going to ask uh, Steve and Shantae and Jessica if they'll come and join me. We're going to receive communion. So if you've got the elements there. Now, if you just got saved, wow, this is awesome. This is your first opportunity to be able to receive communion as a, as a new believer. Maybe you rededicated your life this morning. And so whatever that you have there in your home, if you have um, bread or crackers or whatever you're using and juice, I want you to have that there. We're going to pray together. Jessica's made notes of all of the prayer requests. And I'm just going to have a prayer over all of these today. So if you requested prayer, um, those of you that saw on the, and you see the comments, I want you to please be praying over them as well. We're not going to pray, I'm not going to list them all, but I just want to pray over all of these. And there are several needs that are on here. So I want you to just pray with us. And we're going to pray over communion today. Father, I thank you that you're a God that hears and answers. You said call to me and I will answer you. And we pray over every one of these needs for family members, for healing. Lord, For I pray for healing of those issues that people have, Lord, for headaches and, and for those uh, people, Lord, for, for the ones who, who, who have lost things in, in a fire. And Lord, we're asking you, Lord, oh, you're, you're, you're a God who is over infection in people's lives and over cancer, Lord, for healing for people and father for covering lord over those that are that are that are working lord during this time for those that have had job layoffs and 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 just over those that are in grief over losing a loved one over unspoken requests for people that are struggling over people that that just need your touch they're in their homes today God, I pray your peace and your comfort and your strength for families that maybe aren't able to be with their loved ones who are Lord, in nursing homes and hospitals or across the country, Lord, I pray your touch upon them. Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you, Lord, for that, that you you gave your life for us. We remember today 
as we receive communion, we remember that, that you, you gave the greatest gift in giving your life for us. God, I pray today, yes, your presence in every home as we walk in obedience to you to do this until you come. We always do a, a declaration together. So I'm going to ask you, if you will, to make this declaration out loud. It's important that we declare things with our lips, that what we say, we know that there's power in, in our words. And so today, I want uh, these that are here are going to say this with me, and I want you to say this at home. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus thank, you thank you for loving me. Thank you for your invitation. Thank to the secret place. I draw near to you. I believe you're coming soon. And in these days, there is an awakening. You're my Savior. You're my Deliverer. You are a covering over me and over my family. Thank you for salvation. I'm saved by your blood and by your stripes. I am healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's by his stripes that we're healed. And as we receive communion, if you need a healing touch, and there's several people that needed prayer, if you need healing, I'm believing the Lord for his healing over you just right now, even as you're, as you're receiving the elements. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, For I received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he given thanks, he broke it. And he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. And in the same manner, let us also take of the bread, and we will break the bread and partake. you Jesus oh thank you Jesus then verse 25 he said in the same manner he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood and this do as off as you drink it in remembrance of me and remembering the blood that Jesus Christ shed for you and I so that we have access let us also partake of the cup And then he said, for as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so that's what he's speaking over you. You just pro proclaimed the fact that he died for you until he comes. And Noah said, you know what, Pastor, every time you say it, I already hear the words, I already have it, and then you're always going to say this, and I do. And he's coming soon. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. His coming is near at the door. We love you. You want to say anything this morning? We love you and we miss you. Can't wait till we can all be together again. Amen. That day's com coming very soon. Looking forward to having you back. And it's going to be special when we come back together. I believe you're going to be really blessed. You're going to come back to this house. And uh, we've, we've been working. We're going to continue working, Amen. getting things ready. Because not only are you coming, I'm believing you're going to have family members. We're going to have a harvest. Yes. Man, we're going, to see, we're going to see these altars are going to be filled. Amen. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not just salvation, but I just sense even when I said that, that God said, I'm not just going to save them. I'm going to fill them with the Holy Ghost, yes. and I'm going to yes. use them in ministry, yes. and they're going to go out for me, and there's going to be revival that happens outside of this place because of the anointing of God that's yes. going to go on those who have returned to him. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. We love you. We're praying for you.
If you need anything, you let us know. We just pray the blessing of God on you today.